For the following exercises, graph the given functions by hand. Okay, so we've done tons of problems like this already. Um, so if you want to look at the beginner questions, you can go to the last couple of videos. They're on the playlist, the absolute value playlist, which is will be linked in the description if you want to check that out. Um, but without further ado, let's do the first one. Now I'm going to teach you guys all a quick inversion by using transformations instead of trying to just do the math. You can always plug in values for X and figure out the Y coordinates and then plot them in, but I'm just going to do it visually just so that I, I, I want you guys to get a better understanding of, of math. Okay. So the first graph is F of X equals two times the absolute value of X plus three and then plus one. We have to figure out what that looks like on a graph. The first thing that you have to know is you have to know what the standard graph looks like. That's something that you have to memorize. The standard graph here is the absolute value graph. We could either write that as f of x equals the absolute value of x, or remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y, so it would be y equals the absolute value of x. And I have it here, one, two, three. Oh, perfect. <laughs> the absolute value graph always looks like a v. All right, so from the start, it looks like a v. It always goes... It, it starts from the origin, and then it goes up one and over one in both directions. And then it goes up one and over one, up one and over one, so that you always get this nice looking V. Okay, so we'll start there for all three of these graphs. Okay, that's this one. Sorry, guys, two seconds. And then this one. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that's the first thing, just memorizing what the absolute value graph looks like. The second thing that we have to take into account is if we're doing the first one, we have to notice what is different from this graph than the original. The original only has the absolute value of X. So let's color code and see what's different. Well, in our graph here, we have a two in front. So that means something that is not in the original function. So I have to take into consideration of that. I have a plus three in my function that is not in the original function. So I have to do something with that. And then I have a plus one all the way at the end. That is in my function that is not in the original function. So it looks like I have to have three things that I have to do to my graph and then I will be done. Now for the rule of thumb is always start with what's inside your absolute function graph. Do you see that? I will just put these lines over here, right, as my absolute value. And this plus three is inside the absolute value graph. So you have to do those shifts first, okay? Now, this is a plus three. We went over in previous examples what these specifically mean. So just know that a plus or any number inside is always going to be a horizontal shift. Inside shifts inside your function will always be going from left to right. And in this case, a plus, just remember that a plus value is always going to the left, okay? So by how many numbers? They will tell you, it's a plus three. So that means that we are going to the left three units. So that's the first shift that I have to do. I have to go to the left three. So I'm going to take my whole graph and I'm going to visualize. And, and when I do this, I always like to look at the, the, the trough here, the, the lowest point, because it's easy to kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to just visualize that point And I have to go to the left three times. So let's go. Ready? One, two, and I'm going to go off the screen a little bit, but the graph still remains the same. So there we go. Okay. Does everybody see that? Right? And you could always, you know, 
have the arrow here now instead. But just know that the arrow is, you know, it's off the page for here, but you could always just have your arrows here. Okay. That's the first part. So that's the green part. We did the green already. Awesome. We did the plus three. Now, what do you think is next? Are we going to work with the blue next or the, or the yellow? Are we going to multiply or are we going to add one? What would come next in terms of PEMDAS? You would have to multiply everything first, right? And then you just add the one at the end. So I have to work with this times two by the absolute value function. What does that actually mean? These, so if you have a two in front, if you have a three in front, if you have a four in front, these are stretches. In the previous examples, we did a negative. That was a reflection. These are actual numbers. So these are going to stretch the graph vertically, stretch it up and down. Basically what that means is that you're going to just notice where your points are. So I'll just take the first, maybe I'll take the first five here and you're going to stretch them by two. So you're going to take your X value, right? Uh, yeah. And then you're just going to multiply it by two. So here your X value, let's do this one. Your X value was zero, right? So zero times two is still zero. So the new point would still be here. But now let's look at these guys. These X values are ones. So if we do our X value times by two, one times two is two, which means that now these, instead of being on, you know, the Y equals one, Actually, I'm sorry, guys. It is y times 2. Let's just put that there. y times 2, not x times 2. So y times 2, that makes sense because it's vertical. That's your y axis. So your y is a 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. So now these would now move up to the 2 spot. So they're going to be up here now. And then we do the same thing. Now these are on y equals two, two times two is four. So these new ones would be now all the way up to where four is. So they're not gonna be here. That's two, I have to go up another two. So that's all the way up here. And now we kind of see the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just erase the original. Whoop. Let's see if I could get that. That's good enough. And those are my new coordinates now. So it's going to be a much steeper V. There you go. And now the two is all done. Now the last thing we have to do is this yellow. It's a plus one. That is outside of the function. Outside of the function stretches are vertical stretches or vertical transformations, technically. So just know that if it's a plus, you're going upward. If it's a negative, you are going downward. In this case, it was a plus one. So you have to shift everything up one. So I'm going to take this whole graph, and I'm just going to move it up one. Boop. There you go. And this new point, let's see if I could grab it. This new point would now be up here. And finally, that is your function. F of X equals two times the absolute value of X plus three plus one. And there you go. So all you have to do is just do your three independent transformations, but always start in the middle of your function, start inside the function, and then work outward. So we're going to be doing the same thing here. We already have our f of x equals the absolute value of x, right? And now we just work from inside to outside. So there's three things that I see 
that are not included in our original function. I have a times by 3 now. I have this minus 2, and I have a plus 3 outside. You always have to start inside the function. So a minus 2 inside, remember minuses or pluses inside the function, they're horizontal shifts. So this is inside. We go from left or to the right. This is a minus 2. A minus is going to the right. And how many times? Two. So I'm going to take my graph and go to the right twice. One, two. Okay, so that checks out. Now, the next thing, remember, we have to multiply first before I can just add a three, PEMDAS rules. And timesing by three is a stretch. You're going to take your y values and times it by that number. So my y value for here is a zero. So zero times three is zero, so that stays. This y value is a one. So for here, the y was one. One times three is three. So that's my new y value. So one, two, three. I will now have a point here. Right, one, two, three, yep. And then you do the same thing, so maybe we'll do it on this side. This y was also a 1, so 1 times 3 is 3, so 1, 2, 3, you'll have a new number here. And maybe if I do the next one, so this guy is a y of 2. 2 times 3 is 6, so you got to go all the way up to number 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go and you're gonna start seeing your new shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this graph. Let's see if I can, oop, actually this one stays. And there is my new shape. This actually, this comes over here. And this one gets moved over here, I believe. Oop, yep, yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's the second part, so we could check that off. And now we just have to work on the outside function. And just like we said before, the outside are vertical shifts. If it's a plus, it's going upward. And if it's a minus, it's going downward. This is a plus three, so we're moving upward three. So I'm going to just take my whole graph and just move it up three. Now let me see if I can actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to actually, we're just gonna go up three. This might get a little messy, but you guys can see. So one, and let me grab it from here. Let's see. One, two, three. There you go. So let me just clean this up. Okay, perfect. And there is your new graph. So you have, you still see the three points here, so that's perfect. One, two, and three. Awesome job. Let's do the final one. Remember, the original is just the x, uh, absolute value of x, and now we just have to find out, well, what's different here? Now, hold up. There's now a two times x inside the graph. That we don't like. We want to try to get that times number outside of the graph, like we've seen in the other examples, because then we can just stretch it. So if I just rearrange this, f of x equals, if I pull out this two, right, this two can I multiply two by any number to get to four? This is basically the distributing property, right? They have a number in common. I could pull out a two. 
So if I pull out a two, this would be two times the absolute value of x minus two times what will get me four? Two times two. And now I have the same setup as before. And there are your three things that are different. I have a stretch of two, right? I have a minus two inside, which is what we're going to do first, and then a minus three outside. So just like before, the minus two, right? We're not using the minus four anymore because we pulled that two out. A minus two inside tells me that I'm going to the right two units. So I'm going to just take my graph and move it to the right. One, two. Okay. So that part is done. Now I'm going to stretch it by two. Remember, you take your y value and you times it by two in this case. So zero times two is zero. That will stay. But now this, we have a y of one. One times two is two. So I will move it up to here. And the same thing for that side. Here is a y of two. Two times two is four. So I have to move it up to the fourth position. And you kind of can see this new stretch. So instead of it being here, there is my new graph. And I will, let's see. That looks good. There you go. Okay. And that gets rid of that stretch. And now we just have to work on the minus three. That's outside. Remember, outsides are vertical shifts. This is a minus three. Minus means down. So we're just going to be going down three. So if I take my graph, let's see if I could get all my points. Oop, I'm going to move the graph. Hold on a minute. I'm just going to be going down three. So we started here, right? So we're going to go down one, we're going to go down two, and then we're going to go down three. And there you go. If I just move this down, boop, that goes there. And the lines, they follow as well. The arrows, they follow. And that's that graph. So the only difference between these two, you know, this one, was that you have to distribute first before you do the actual manipulations of the graph. But that's it, guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you or not. I love talking to you guys. But other than that, I will see you guys all in the next question. And also check out the playlist just so that you see all the questions that we've done for absolute values. All right? Have a great day, guys. Best of luck in your classes. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.